Let's talk for a minute about the new way that I'm viewing web design now. Because I've been doing this for 20 years, so that's a long time. And over that time, things have evolved. But over the last five years or so, I've taken a fundamentally different approach to what we do, you know, like building websites and doing marketing for people. And it's not complicated. It's just three steps. And we'll go through all three steps right now. But it's such a fundamentally different experience, and it's so much more fulfilling. But it's also tricky to implement because there's some gotchas that pop up along the way. So the first step, and, and I know a lot of people like practical skills and, and what services should I offer and stuff, and we'll get to that for sure. But the first step is, is like I fundamentally changed the way that I view myself and what I do. And so, so like it starts with you. And what I mean by that is I believe that everybody has a unique ability to contribute to the world. Like, so like, for example, like, like you have relationships that I don't have and you have a personality that I don't have and you have different skills than I have. And, and like, and I have those are, and I have different skills from other people. And like, I live in a different place from other people. So like this whole combination of all of these things that, that come together to define you. When, we, when I started to, to leverage that and, and kind of put that into the way that I view web design, it just made it so much more fulfilling. And what an example is, I used to think, well, what I want to do is I want to get really, really good at building websites and doing marketing and doing the copywriting and doing all the, all the services so that I can then have something that people want to buy. But I, but I didn't really consider up until relatively recently, it's like, well, why buy from me instead of from somebody else? Is it because my skill is higher? You know, it's like, is it because the website looks better? You know, like, like what makes my work different from someone else's work? And one component to that is what we'll talk about in a second is like, I really have this results oriented mindset and we'll talk about that soon. But the other thing is, it's like, well, why can't I put my personality into it? Why can't I put my skills into it that are different from your skills? And why can't I, why can't I put something together that works for the people that I live around? You know, like, like, why can't I put myself into it as opposed to just a skill set? And when I did that, it was just so much more fulfilling and, and like it caused the client relationships to be much more authentic and therefore clients are even getting better results for it and everything. It's like everything was just so much better when I, when I started just reevaluating myself because like everybody, like I believe that you have something to offer that I can't, I can't offer and I have something to offer that you can't offer. It's like, and if you have something to offer that's distinct and unique that helps people, well, maybe you shouldn't hold that back. You know what I mean? So that was the first step. The second step was, okay, well, now that I have this understanding that I'm really trying to serve people, and what I mean by serving is I want to push people in a direction and like put people in a place that's better than they could get on their own, and hopefully better than they, than they could get with other people as well. It's like, it's like, how can I serve people in a way that gives them like a measurable result that's better than what they would otherwise be able to get on their own? And and, it, and it's not just giving people websites that, that does that. You know, so like my, my grandfather used to take me sailing a lot when I was a kid. Like he was, he was, we had a house down on, on the Potomac River right near the Chesapeake Bay. And I can remember growing up with him and everything. Like we had sailboats, we had canoes. Like he just loved to be on the water. And I did too. And I, even to this day I do. And so I remember one time just as a kid, we were like tying a canoe onto a trailer to kind of get it out into the water and everything. And he throws me this rope. And I'm like, well, how am I, how am I going to like fasten the canoe to the trailer when I'm a kid? Cause like, I didn't know how to tiny knots or anything like that, but the rope was a really high quality, good rope. You see what I mean? But like, if I don't know how to use it, like if I don't know how to tie the knots, I can't really do anything with it. And the same thing is true with these websites. It's like, if you give somebody a website, it can be a beautiful, awesome, high performance website. But like, if you don't know what to do with it, you can't really get any results out of it. Like you have to either know how to tie the knots, so to speak, or somebody else is going to have to tie the knots for you. And that's, that's, that was such a mind opening thing compared to like how I used to do web design compared to how we do it now today. It's like, I want to be the person that not only gives you the rope, but also ties the knots so that you actually have something useful out of it. Because the rope by itself doesn't actually do anything until you know how to use it. And I thought that was just such a, such a shift. So then the question is, okay, well, how do you figure out what that is? And that's a, that's a hard part. And one of the things that makes it hard is it feels like it needs to be huge. It needs to be like this thing that no one has ever done before with all of these features and just like this big thing. But it doesn't have to. It certainly doesn't have to start that way. Like it could be something so small. I know people that do nothing but optimize Google business profiles for like between like $300 to $500 per month. 
Now, there's work that goes into it. You know, you're putting up posts, you're answering FAQs, and you're keeping the hours straight. And like, there's technical things that you can tweak to make sure that it shows up when people search locally and stuff. So there's work to be done. But it's like, I mean, if you don't know anything about Google business profiles, I can probably, I can just show you how to do it in like an afternoon or give yourself a weekend. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like a, it's not like a hard thing to do for people like you and me, but like if you're a business owner and you're not really all that techie or you just don't want to put the time into it or whatever, it's the first time you ever messed with it. it, it it's kind of hard. And, it, and even if it's not hard for them, it's probably something they don't want to put their attention on. You see what I mean? And so you could just start with something like that. Like what if you what if you had a system where that you were selling for 500 bucks a month where you just help people get reviews and manage their profiles and you know post pictures when they com complete projects and answer FAQs and you know just stuff like that where you spend a couple hours a month, 500 bucks a month. So that's going to be what that's like $6,000 a year. What if you did what if you landed two clients a month just doing that small thing? That's that's an example of like it's a small thing you can push people in the right direction. They're making more progress than they otherwise would. So it's helpful. And it's like, it's awesome. Like you could just do that like and, and start there. And then maybe later you're like, hey, you know what? Now that we're getting this extra visibility on your Google profile or whatever, why don't we link your website up to it? And so now you have, a, a, you're beginning to build a value ladder of things that you can offer down the road. It's like, why not, why not do that? And, but you don't even have to do the other steps of the ladder yet. You know, you can build that into the future. Like you can just get started, like just kind of create that thing up front that's helpful and then you can add on to it later. And that's another thing that I found to be kind of eye-opening because I tend to over-engineer stuff. Maybe you do too. It's like, do you ever feel like that whatever it is that you build, it's like gotta be the biggest, baddest, best thing there ever was or whatever before you can do anything with it? Like I oftentimes struggle against that and I want to kind of, kind of distill things down to something smaller and then build it over time. So anyway, just doing like that Google business profile stuff, that could be enough to get started. Um, and another example is like, you check out Blue Theory. That's, we, I'll take you through like the whole five steps of our five pillar offer from our most popular web design package, kind of dial in some more features if you need that. Um, but the point is, it doesn't have to be huge to begin with. It just needs to be something. Like it, it's so much better to have created something that you know works rather than just winging it off the top of your head and hoping for the best. So now we get to step three. And step three is you got to tell people about the thing that you just created. You know what I mean? So I used to, I used to, in the beginning, especially, I would rely either on referrals or uh, like overflow work from agencies and so forth. Like I had this whole business, <laughs> uh, I named my business Digital Underwear, <laughs> like W-A-R-E, like software, way back when, this is like, like 20 years ago when I first started. And the reason I named the business that was because I used to do like everything kind of behind the submit button. And I would get a lot of my leads and clients from like, uh, direct mail agencies and ad agencies and so forth. People that had like graphic designers in place, but they didn't know how to build websites and WordPress didn't exist yet and all that other stuff. And so I would do kind of all this stuff sort of behind the scenes and then the designers and stuff, but they would do kind of like the front presentation layer. So anyway, all that is to say that I, that's how I used to get clients, but that's not really clients. That's other people getting clients and basically giving them to me for free. Or, or maybe I would pay a small commission or something, but I wasn't doing any marketing. I wasn't telling anybody anything. And I, I wasn't in control of my own lead flow. And consequently, my income was so spiky and erratic. It was like the feast or famine problem. It was very seasonal, especially since direct mail firms were a big part of my, my business model. Like, they, like one of the big things that we used to work with was um, people that would send out college applications. You know, like we had this one direct mail firm that had like three different colleges where they would like email out applications to like the high school students that they wanted to apply and everything. And that was very seasonal. <laughs> so like when, when they're getting ready to send out the applications, like tons of work. And then like afterwards, like nothing, right? So that wasn't really very helpful. And instead, and like, especially now, it's like the big thing is now that you've created this thing, tell people about it. That means basically you need a funnel and that's gonna have three steps to it. One is you gotta like identify where the audience is that you wanna connect with. So like, is it gonna be local businesses? Like for us, we now work primarily with local businesses. And so, well, how do you find local businesses? Well, it's, it's pretty easy to do that because you can just go to LinkedIn, you can go to Google Maps, you can look at places like Angie and Nextdoor and Thumbtack, even like Craigslist, even Facebook groups. It's like, it's really easy to find local business owners or just, or just like open up your, your bank account or bank statement or whatever and like look where you spent money over the past few months. And maybe that will jog some ideas of people that you know that you could probably help out with some stuff that you already have a relationship with where you are the client and maybe they did a really good job for you. So like there's lots of, there's, there's lots of accessibility. Like it's easy to access 
like that audience. So anyway, so now that you found the audience, the second thing it is, well, what do you do to capture the attention of that audience? So now we're talking about leads. Like, how do you get leads from that? And you'll probably either build an email list or have people follow you on social media or subscribe to your YouTube channel, which would be really cool if you did that. <laughs> so give me a thumbs up at least if, the, if you find this helpful. I love it when we are growing this community. It's so much fun. So thank you for doing that. But most of the time for us, when we're working with local businesses, it's building an email list for them so that they can have this two-way conversation going on where they're now moving into step three, which is educating their leads into clients. So it's like you find an audience, you kind of pull leads from that audience, and then you nurture the leads through some kind of an educational sequence. And I like to leverage email with that because that way you own the list and you can have control over, at least they have to see your email in the inbox, right? As opposed to like, if you post something on social media, maybe it doesn't get shown to the whole audience or whatever. But, um, but uh, even if it was social media, it's like, one of the thing, one of the mindset differences that I put behind social media now compared to what I used to think was I don't really use social media to grow an audience for most of our clients because their their budget's so small and their ability to create content is so limited. They, it's, it's a lot of work even to just do like one post a day to come up with the content for that. And if that's the velocity of the content creation, it's, this is not enough content to really reach a whole new audience on a big social media platform especially if it's any sort of a national sort of offer or business. But even at a local level, a lot of times even, you know, just like a, a post a week, it's like, that's probably not going to grow an audience, maybe a little, but what it will do is it will nurture the audience you already have. So like, as you begin to pull leads, maybe even manually or giving presentations and networking groups or just reaching out or just whatever you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, as you're growing that, that kind of face-to-face -face audience, throw them into your into your social media channels or put them on your email list and then nurture those leads over time. And that's that's a huge, radically different approach from how we used to do it way back when, when we we're just taking overflow work and just hoping for referrals. And that's the three-step process. So it's like, it's that, that serving heart. It's then creating something that really helps and then telling people about it. And if you do those three things, you've got an awesome business that's super fulfilling. It's one of these things that's like, everyone's winning. It's like, you're winning because it's awesome. Your clients are winning because they're getting more leads and, and business in their business. Their customers are finding their new cool service because of you. It's like, it's awesome. And um, I, I, just, I just feel like it's a fundamentally different, a different way that I'm viewing web design today compared to before. And then the last piece of all of this is if you want to see a bigger kind of seven pillar example, like, okay, maybe just doing Google business profile management. So maybe that's not enough for you. You want to do more than that. And I agree, you probably should, but you can get started with something as small as that. But if you want to build on it over time, check out this next video and I'll give you a seven pillar example of a solution first agency for portrait photographers. Maybe you could copy that or, or at least pull some gems from that for a solution that you might want to put together. So check out this one here, for the seven pillar offer. See you there.